So let me just introduce our guests for the morning, uh, representing the government of Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, and then also going for the seat of Ibuakwa, Ibuakwa North, currently government spokesperson on governance and security, Palgrave Bwachidankwa. He's a regular on the show, uh, well attired in smoke. He's also a royal. You're a royal, aren't I you? Am. Yeah. Do, do you have a chieftain's title? Not yet. Not yet. Right. Good morning to you. Good morning, Roland, and uh, very good morning to mm. the viewers. And mm. Good morning to the good people of Achimi Bokanov. Great. A distinguished son of the CPP is also here. He's a legal practitioner. And then also um, he works in energy consulting, variedly. Um, ideally, he should be one of the top most energy consultants or perhaps one of the key people to be appointed to manage the sector. Kwame Jantua of Vast Experience is here. He's a regular on the show as well. Kwame Jantua. Yes, sir. Lawyer. Good morning. Lawyer, papa. Pa. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Say good morning to my CPP folk. Yes. He's also director, of, no, chair for the Political Affairs Committee of the Convention People's Party. There we, there we said um, that the second CPP, not the original one of um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, but nonetheless an CPP, offshoot. CPP, CPP. Please, CPP is CPP. Yes. It's not the new CPP. Right. I apologize. Or the former CPP or the upcoming CPP. CPP, CPP. I apologize. Thank Please you. keep sharing as well and let us know what you think. Also joining us is Bruja Jemfi. Uh, Bruja Jemfi is joining me for the first time, but he's been uh, here a couple of uh, times as well. Bruja Jemfi currently is a director of, um, a deputy director for special duties for the NDC. Thank you for joining me, Bruja Jemfi. Thank you, Roland. Mm. Good morning. Yeah. He nearly became the national organizer, right? Youth organizer. Okay. The national youth organizer of the NDC and uh, now he is a deputy director for special duties for and one of his tactics to make sure he monitors the MPP that's why he's here and uh, we're here but let's take you through some statistics so far and try to get and um, well Brenda let's go through based on the way the outline is yesterday we we're told that an MOU was signed so but we'll bring you that in a bit but let's take you through some statistics as we know it and we'll start with the committees that have been set up according to what the memo has been, where various subcommittees have been set up. So uh, it also means that these uh, were put together to make sure that the elections uh, were in place. And subsequently, uh, the Presidential Election Committee, as the MPP calls, it has a chair, chairman of the Council of Elders, a vice, the chairman of the constituency patron, the secretary, and then the constituency IT coordinator. In addition, in collaboration with the Electoral Commission, the police, they will be responsible for the verification and authentication of the names of delegates during the electoral process, the electoral process in respective constituencies. I'm trying to pronounce process like uh, my good friend, George AC. Now, uh, next is going to be what has happened <coughs> post the super delegates conference because we've had a number of um, events. So far, Bwache Jaku declined to contest to break the tie between him and Francis Adai Nimo. And so uh, that's why we have Francis Adai Nimo going uncontested to be the fourth person. Alan Chermantin also decided to break away from the party. He now has a new movement. He cited unfair uh, playing field in favor of what he claims to be a, the establishment candidate. Uh, he used a phrase, actually. He has made the <coughs> phrase establishment candidate to stay within the lexicon of our politics of the day. And Francis Adai Nimo now agrees with Alan on issues leading to resignation, but it's still contesting on the hey, Jaku, Wache Jaku he, he issued a statement referencing Alan Chermantin's concerns as well. That is almost like choral berating. Now, Dr. Efri Akuto, says Alan's concerns are largely true. And we know that all of them have been saying varied issues. But Kenny Japon is one of the four who signed that uh, MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding. So um, he's been firing salvos. You know, uh, prior to uh, the, the whole declaration of the result, he said he was going to give Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, the president, and now the Dankwe Kufadwe showdown. And since then, showdown has become another lexicon. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has been using it and then uh, Kenny Japo even has a billboard on the road I use every day, the motorway. He has it on all sides. Showdown. The showdown is tomorrow, I'm telling you. So this is the pre-showdown <coughs> big issues 
we're discussing this morning. And since then, we're telling you about the number of delegates and they are there, Ash Ashanti, as we know it. There are 47 constituencies nationally. They have the biggest list of the delegates, 34,000 in excess, and they are there. So almost like 35,000, followed by Central, and um, we have them. Let's go to the next, and subsequently you find the list. Uh, Greater Accra has 39,000, but it's very cosmopolitan. It's almost like when you're in Greater Accra, it's almost evenly spread. Uh, Eastern region has 21,000. Again, let's emphasize, Ashanti region, Eastern region are the strongholds of the, of the MPP Nandila. If they win, it will depend on Ashanti, largely, and then secondly on Eastern region. And then if they will lose, it will depend on the two regions as well, based on what the recent statistics have been over the last uh, two, three elections. And then we have the subsequent, the smaller ones, you know, uh, 3,000, 8,000, 6,000 for their voter, 11,000, all of that. All right. So now, uh, then we have subsequently um, Western region as well. Now let's come to base. Palgrave Wache Dankwa. You're contesting for the seat as well. So um, your, your time has not been mentioned. But if you look at the salvos that have been thrown, the preparation so far that has been done, <coughs> Um, what do you make of this election that is coming up tomorrow? Palgrave, Wache, Dankwa. Roland, um, tomorrow's election is a culmination of events that have happened for the new patriotic party. Um, it's going to be a democratic election. All the processes that were put in place prior to coming into the conference, which is tomorrow, from the super delegates conference to every single candidate having an opportunity to campaign and share their policies and agendas with the delegates of the new patriotic party. Tomorrow is the D-Day. Tomorrow is the final exam. The entire process has been extremely democratic. The new patriotic party has once again shown that it's the party of choice for the young people of this country. The new patriotic party has once again shown that when it comes to politicking and it comes to formation of the political party at the grassroots, there is none other than the new patriotic party. We are aware <clears throat> that there are four persons that are going into the election tomorrow. It's going to be a free and fair election administered by the Electoral Commission of Ghana. We are no doubt in our mind that the level at which we have decentralized, um, unity is what we all um, wish for and pray for. Um, we know that at this very time, um, the best leader to lead the new patriotic party. And I'm very certain that um, everyone that is viewing has known my stance on um, the choice of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia um, for me as the rightful person um, to lead the new patriotic party for a number of reasons. Um, <clears throat> how astute he has been, how sacrificial he has been, how honest he is, how loyal he is, how transparent he is, how sacrificial he is, how hardworking he is, how result-oriented he is, how of a servant leader he is, which um, the country needs. And I have stated that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the miracle baby and the miracle boy, um, not only for the new patriotic party, but also for the Ghanaian people at large. And we've gotten to a stage where we are sure that forging forward with such tenant and character of al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Ghana is going to be one of the most enviable countries in the sub-region of West Africa, one of the most enviable countries on the continent of Africa, and one of the most enviable countries globally. And so tomorrow, um, you are aware that the IGP, Dr. George Kufudampari, would also deploy um, police personnel um, across the length and breadth of this country to ensure that the election is free, is fair, conducted in an unintimidated manner. And I'm glad that yesterday um, at the press um, conversation and the MOU signage, you could see the commandery um, um, between the various aspirants that we are one family. We are a united family. We stand stronger in our ideas and ideologies. Our differences are strong, but that's what makes us a bigger family. And um, you could see the smiles and the exchanges of hugs and pleasantries between the sitting president and other Dan Kufado together with the um, candidate Japan and the uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bami. Uh, I, 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 I saw Dr. them shaking hands. Yeah, yeah. Shaking hands, hugging, exchanging pleasantries um, with Dr. Free Akoto and Adainimo. And I think that um, we, we, we want to forge a stronger party together. And uh, we want to be sure that after um, tomorrow we have a party that is united, 
we have a party that is stronger to be able to face um, the NDC in the 2024 general election. Mm. Well, Roger, at the end of the day, it also means that all the things that have said or have been said by the individual candidates, particularly Kennedy and Japan, um, on, on how Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the establishment candidate and the concerns he has, um, will, could also tend to feed into all this. For example, uh, Pagreve is saying, oh, <coughs> Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, of course. Uh, they're not supposed to be campaigning, but it, clearly just um, going out of the bounds as far as the morality of um, what should remain within the precinct of elections are concerned. By your observation, are you worried about that? Or because um, <coughs> maybe someone who accused uh, the NDC that or maybe it also happens, so, so that's the same. Well, uh, Roland, let me first of all um, mention that the NDC is in a sorrowful mood um, today. You know, uh, the passing away of our former Vice Chairperson and okay. a former Minister of State, uh, Madam Sherry Aite. Oh. Yes, we are having an event uh, this evening. She was buried in the U.S. or uh, there was a memorial. Yes, yes, but there, there will be uh, some events that maybe before we close, uh, you give me an opportunity to announce it to our members and Ghanaians in general. But this evening, there's going to be a memorial service at the party headquarters uh, for her. And so we call on party members uh, by 5 p.m. The event will start. We expect that we'll be there in our numbers to join the party leadership uh, for this particular event. Uh, on the 10th, there will be a funeral and a mass service for her. And so before we close, I'll, I'll give all the details. But um, on the NPP presidential uh, primaries, uh, we know, and I think that a lot of people who have monitored the process uh, would agree with me mm -hmm. that the process has been shaped in such a way that everybody knows the likely outcome of tomorrow's election. Uh, it's, it's not going to be any other person than Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. You mean the whole process has been hijacked? Of course. And For how? Um, if, if you follow events of the super delegates and the fact that the party leadership has failed to address a lot of the shortcomings of a super delegate it tells you that the party itself has designed that they want dr mahmoud baumia to be the presidential candidate some for convenience some uh, mm -hmm. for other reasons of you know cover up of the wrongs of of this government and all that so Beginning from this week, we have heard reports of DCs, government appointees, all being deployed to induce delegates and uh, you know present items, various items, in order to get Dr. Mahmoud Baumia elected. So, for us in the NDC, we are not expecting anything. We are expecting that by tomorrow, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia will be declared the presidential candidate of the. NPP. We don't know how high or how heavy the endorsement would be, but at least we know that that will be the likely uh, outcome of, of that election. From how uh, uh, Alan Chematin's agent was treated mm. in Dr. Baumier's region, mm. where he was hit in the eye, he got injured. Blood stains all blood over. Blood stains all over. They had to uh, transport him to Accra in order to seek for uh, medical attention. And the party has been very silent about it. The person who is alleged to have committed that crime is the regional youth organizer of the NPP in the, in the Northeast region. That's, that's what the, the person who was attacked, that's what he said. Yes. And there has not been any disciplinary action against him. The police has not acted probably because, I mean, their boss was in favor of Dr. Baumia, who is the chairman of a police council. Nothing has happened. From that one to the allegations of Boache Jakun, mm. how he was forced out of the contest, the, the uh, regulations that was agreed by the party itself, 
in the middle of the game was changed because they didn't want Boache Jakun to be part of the last five. And so he had to be uh, uh, taken out. Uh, all of those issues have not been addressed by the, the party. And so it clearly shows that they just want to make sure that Dr. Baumia becomes the flag bearer. And of course, that is the, the wish of, of a president. And so that is what is going to happen tomorrow. We are just praying that we will not see <coughs> an escalation of what happened on September 20, uh, uh, so September 20, uh, I think 24th, where the agents were intimidated, where even regional officers. You mean the violence and the intimidation? The violence and the intimidation. Such that regional officers were voting and displaying their ballots. And we know that in all of these elections, the ballot is supposed to be secret. You are not supposed to display your ballot. And when you display your ballot, that's a sport ballot. And these are some of the uh, protests that some agents decided to register when the process was ongoing, which led to some of them being, uh, uh, you know, taken hostage, some beating, and that brought about the showdown uh, pronouncement by Kennedy and Japan. And so if you look at the numbers that voted in the super delegates, mm. which was merely a, a little under 1,000. Yeah, that's are, a little over 900. I yes. Think. So if you look at the numbers now, where we are looking at more centers, about over 200,000 persons going to vote. And the, uh, 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 the, the kind of acrimony that is going on within the campaign, to the extent that one of the aspirants was, they rushed on him, people had to surround him and block, you know, how they wanted to physically assault him. We are just praying that it will not escalate to a level where we will record, you know, more violence and all that. I saw the, you, you showed the... The, uh, the police, the, the delegates. The delegates. Yes. And the strength of each region. Yes. It's quite clear how Ashanti region has behaved uh, in terms of the leadership. 34,000. 34,000. Almost 35,000. Yes. I, we see like more, I think maybe 30,000 going to Baumia because clearly... The leadership. You're not, you're not is, is, yes, 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 you're yes. well versed in the yes, region. That, you see, the, the region, we will see the true nature of the region after the NPP premise. This premise will not tell us how the region will behave in, in the general elections. I don't understand. Explain. Okay, so you see how Dr. Baumier's region behaved in the super delegates, where all of the persons that voted, we are told, voted for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. There was no sport ballot. There was no rejected ballot. None of the aspirants got even a single vote. All of them went straight to Dr. Baumia. And how they have treated Alan Chermatin. Yesterday, he launched a, an event uh, in, in Kumase where they are calling on volunteers. And it's, if you see the response that he's getting in the region, some of the people are saying that, look, if that is how the NPP wants to behave, if they are saying that when you go to North You mean East, indigenous Ashanti voters? Exactly. Exactly. And I don't think that they are going to joke with what Alan Chermatin is doing. And if you're listening to Kennedy Japan, he's been sounding the caution bell of how he will behave if the elections go the way that it went during the super delegate elections. And so for us, we wish them well. We, a political party, we have already prepared uh, uh, our asnas. We know that Dr. Baumia would be the eventual winner of this premise. And so we are ready for him. We know that he has nothing to offer the, the people of Ghana. His conduct and his uh, competence has betrayed him in terms of what he said he could do and what he has actually done 
in the last seven years. Mm. And so the people of Ghana knows, and you within your heart, you know that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia cannot handle this nation if given the mandate as a president. And so we are just preparing and waiting for the MPP to elect him as the official candidate. Then the game and the showdown will begin. So the showdown hasn't started for you? Not at all. Now, Rajantwal, observing the invectives, the jabs, the allegations that have been raised, and, come, and then adding to all that transpired in the superdelegate election, with Alan breaking away, how do you think that will influence voters tomorrow? Eastern region, Ashanti region, Greater Accra, countrywide. Good morning. Morning. My fellow panelists, are you talking about the fact of the breakaways? The breakaway. Ken says he was offered 800 million before then. Somebody said, uh, was it the former Suhum MP, um, Frederick, uh, said 500 million? You know, I don't know. Roland. But the, the reality is that a lot has gone on. Roland, let's call it. The government has been described as being incompetent because it took us to the IMF. Let's call a spade a spade. Hmm? Since President Nana Kufuado came into power, has anybody within the MPP been able to confront him? Has anybody in the MPP been able to confront him on the way the country is going? Why do you say that? Because he has control of the party. And it looks as if MPP members are not ready to do anything ultra virus to that control. So he gets what he wants. And what he wants is that Dr. Baumia, fine gentleman, fine gentleman, Dr. Baumia becomes the flag bearer of the MPP going forward. So for me, there's no question there. It would have been very challenging for Dr. Baumia if some of the members had not dropped out and there was a much healthy competition between those standing. Look. With regards to what you refer to in terms of all the machinations that have happened and whether it would have any reflection on the uh, voting tomorrow, those who have resigned have resigned. Those who have dropped out have dropped out. I really don't see how that would be a reflection on tomorrow's voting. However, <coughs> however, and I, I agree with uh, Mr. Jemfi, the show will start after, after the elections. And if Vice President Baumia is elected, then that is where you will see whether the MPP is united or whether the MPP can break up. Look, Ghanaian politics eh, can, can be described as one mile but an inch deep. It can be described as one mile but an inch deep. And what is that inch deep? The tar on that one mile road is so thin that if you're not careful, you can sink into the road. Because it doesn't look as, look as if Ghanaian politics today is interested in what politics actually is, which service to the people. Mm. I would have thought the MPP, calling itself the most democratic party in this country, 
would be balanced in terms of how they bring their flag bearers up. Ghanaians need to know that anybody who stands as a flag bearer has the word with all to be a president of this country. And I would have thought the MPP always touting that they bring things in first would have even had a debate between the, ex, the, the flag bearers who were standing. And what will that debate do? That debate will show if it so happens that they become a flag bearer. It's not only a question of winning the presidential vote, but it's a question of how you, being a flag bearer, a potential president, will handle the country. Because you're not only speaking to members of your party, you're speaking to the country at large. If a flag bearer comes to tell us, oh, I'll use agriculture, I'll use this, I'll use that, how? How are you going to use it? Tell us the tenants in which and the things that you're going to use to change where we are. And I said, Dr. Baumia is a fine gentleman. How can he abrogate himself from where the country stands today? How? I, I don't see it. You mean how can he not account for how the country has yes, gotten where it is? Because when he says to us that, well, I'm not the final person who makes decisions. I'm there to support. Has he said that? Yes, he said it. Really? Yeah, yeah, He said it. I heard him say it. The head of government's economy manager. Yes, 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 yes. He said it. I mean, when, when I heard it, uh, I shook in my, in my wake. I said, how, how is that possible? Because right now, hmm, where he is, I would have expected that based on the the performance of his government, that is what he will be touting today. His, Tell me. His achievement. Yes, the, 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 the government's achievement. Tell me, how many of the flag bearers have touted the achievements of the MPP? Tell me. I haven't heard. Have you heard? They are running away. Have you heard? Tell me, maybe. Paul Grave will tell me. Yeah, we have heard. But how many of them, how many of them, when I've heard interview of Adanimo, I've heard interview of... Uh, Kennedy Japan. Kennedy Japan. I've heard interview of my own uncle, Afri Yakuto, and they've all come back to the point that things are hard. Things are hard. The president himself has said to us, well, the next president who is going to come in would help solve the challenges that we're going through. He has who, checked out. who created those challenges? There's something called perpetual secession in, in politics. You take the access and liabilities of whatever government you took over from. So, if the MPP tell us that, oh, we've seen what President Mahama has done. He came four years, we've seen what he's done. Can we not say same of Vice President Baumia? Or because he was Vice President, so you can't say that. The President said to us that he's his what? Economic guru, didn't he? Whisked. Oh, the same. Whiskey guru, guru, guru is you know local uh, terms. Did he not say that to us? Did he not make him head of the economic management team? What is the responsibility of the economic management team? And where we sit today, hmm, can we really say that the MPP has served Ghanaians well? in terms of even services. What do you say? Let me, uh, let me, ask, you, let me ask you a question. If you have a government hmm, or a party in power who can't fix 
simple things like street lights, how do you expect them to fit an economy? How? Simple things like street lights, which are service to the people, how do they handle an economy? Drive around Accra at night and see how dark the country is. See how dark the country is. Have we been able to fix street lights that serve the people? Have you been able to? Well, you will continue with this. I, I love this narrative from you. It also has to, uh, another perspective on, on this. Now, let's get some statistics one time from the man who so far, I believe, has been giving us uh, for the last year or two some good um, outcomes on, on his research. Musa Dankwa is Executive Director, Global Info Analytics. And Musa Dankwa, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Roland. Please, um, if you have been saying that based on the numbers you are recording in your polls, DMB 2024, it is possible. And then Ken for president, Ken for 2024 is following. Um, from the last time that you did that poll, what could be the likely outcome that there could be some margins of error of change or influences one way or the other on tomorrow? And what, what could they be? Even if, let's say, from the last time you had a publicized, a published result, based on your experiences, you could make some predictions also. And what would they be for tomorrow? Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Roland. Um, if you watched our report that we released last week, we provide I did what we call a trend curve for both candidates. And the trend curve shows over a period of June till October 11th when we interviewed delegates across the country. You would have seen that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's curve is on downward trend. And that is an indication that the race is tightening more than what people think it is currently. And then Kennedy's trend curve was on the upward curve, which means he's gaining grounds. Now, if you look at the last poll, which had Dr. Mount Bamiya leading with 43.5% and Kennedy with 23.5%, uh, with a hoping 14% said they will not disclose their voting intention to us. Okay. It leads one, one to believe that the, those who are undecided uh, where the tightening of the race is happening right now. Okay. And from the last bit of the poll and tomorrow, I think the race will be tighter. But if you look at our projections, we are saying that at the end of the day, we still expect Mahmoud Bamiya to carry the day, but with much tighter margin than what everybody else is projecting because of the trend line we showed. We have him on 58.4%, plus or minus 2% margin of error. That's our most realistic scenario for tomorrow. 58% plus or minus? Now, plus, yes. Plus or minus. Okay. When the super delegates was convened, super delegate election was convened, we were told that, the, is it 68 he had? 68%? All right. Yeah, 68%. Okay. Uh, we're told that um, because we have a bigger electoral college list, 200,000 in excess, it was going to reduce. So you are saying that the, what you're recording so far is following that trend, and why? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, before I came to the office this morning, I spoke to three delegates that I know personally uh, from some constituencies. And I asked them, what is their view of what is happening in their own area? And one of them told me that, I uh, <laughs> meaning that the race is not very certain, even though he expects Bahamian to win slightly in that constituency. So I think what people are kind of uh, saying in public is not what is really happening on the ground. We should expect a bit of tightening of the race tomorrow. And that's where we are saying, what we are saying that he will not be able to make it to the 68% he got in the super delegate. Because these guys who are going to vote tomorrow, 
they constitute 95% of the top cream of the party, I mean, of, of, of the party's delegate. About 3% of the electoral area coordinators, we've spoken to them. We've spoken to the 92% of the uh, polling station executives. So the views we are presenting reflect those last bottom, the bottom two. And that's why we are confident that our numbers may pan out tomorrow. Um, if you look at how Kenny Japon performed, was it a surprise then at that superdelegate election? And how has he performed uh, up to today in terms of inching closer to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia? Because from what you're saying, it's because he's performed creditably or is, uh, he's been able to close the gap. And why? Right. You see, doing like me. No, kind of. Made those tantrums for those who they were looking for. Who from what he was were around 25% in delegate post in June to around 21% after the delegate elections. It showed that the man has made a huge, huge gain from 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 that super delegate unfortunately when alan withdrew from the race a uh, few weeks after both he and baumia dropped in the in numbers because alan withdrew uh, sent a lot of people in the column of undecided or i will not disclose but since then in the last poll we've seen while kennedy goes up again from 18.4 to 23.5 Baumia drops from 44.9 to 43.5. So that's why he's having a downward trend in the curve as compared to Kennedy. Now, there are people sincerely who are not telling uh, people the truth about their true voting intention. And that will tend to favor Kennedy than Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Other stations, some of my, my, my good friends who are journalists based in Ashanti have been doing a lot of box pops, sampling of views, etc. But I have to insist, and I keep making that position, that those who speak on the streets and are MPP voters are not delegates. They seem to favor Ken, but are not, right. are not delegates. You, you, you see, so why do we have that trend? All right. In polling, there's something we call leading indicators and lagging indicators. When a candidate is, is, is popular among a particular target group, it is only a matter of time that that feeling begins to permeate into, into delegates. Because the delegates that we are talking to are also Ghanaians, are also on the same street as everybody in Ashanti region. So if the feeling is that this is the guy we want, this is the guy we want, and the guy has time, that sentiment will begin to feed into those who would vote. And that's what we have seen in the polls. Governance is not rhetoric, because we've seen it before. In 2016, there was a lot of rhetoric. Seven and a half years, it hasn't reflected because of a lot of factors. Now, there's been a lot of rhetoric. Can I ask this question that, and also hold it as an opinion, that the rhetoric of Kenny Japon is being believed to be what could manifest if he's elected as a presidential candidate and becomes president. And so um, there is a possibility that the larger section of MPP voters, sympathizers, members, supporters, and delegates seem to be having that desire, that yearn, but they haven't gotten it in the current president, and so think they can find it in Ken, and that is why he's performing or has performed so well in the polls. 
That could be a factor. In fact, if you look at uh, some elections in the past, if you look at a Trump in 20, uh, 2016 for Trump, he was a maverick and he was given the chance by American voters. You look at Bolsonaro in Brazil, those maverick politicians are kind of gaining current. And it's because of the performance of the traditional politicians these days. So there are people who think that, look, we need to have somebody who is not the traditional politician who will do things differently. And they can see that in Ken. The question is, do they have enough numbers in MPP to get right now to win? I think that is where the challenge is. There's certainly a wind blowing, looking for somebody who is a mafia. But is the wind strong enough to right. deliver a tsunami for All Kennedy? Right. All right. That, I don't think they have. Okay. My producer says I should ask, I, I, I wanted to end, but my producer has asked one last question. So now, the constant for 2024 on the ballot paper for presidential election <clears> is John <throat> Dramani Mahama, because he already has been elected. Now, the other variables are DMB, 2024, it is possible, and then came for president. Give me the permutation. So John DMB, John Ken. Now, in fact, if you look at the numbers we just published in October, for our, our October poll, where we have the DMB, JDM, including the butterfly effect, Allen effect, for those two scenarios, the outcome of the poll has been clear. Now, John Mahama is on 48% against Baumia's 28% and Alan 11%. When you throw in Kennedy, the poll numbers that we published show that John Mahama drops to 46%, Ken goes 29.6%, and Alan remains at 11%. That is the current poll numbers we have. So the wow factor is Alan. Yes. All right. In fact, I mean, for, for, for those who are saying that he will make an impact, look at how he's performing in Ashanti video. I will tell you the story. Mm. Indeed. If you, if you, thank you very much, Musa Dankwa, uh, Global Info Analytics, always on hand to give us uh, some good education on what he has researched on. And... You know, you find um, 48%, 40, they're always margin of error. So if you've done research, at, at least you, you, you know that um, these are the, the, the issues. Now, um, I didn't finish today. Uh, you didn't finish. Please um, conclude for me, sir. If it so happens, <laughs> taken from what um, Musa, uh, Dankwa. Musa Dankwa has just said, if it does happen and Alan becomes the kingmaker, the question is, which way would he go? I don't understand. If it goes second round and Alan becomes kingmaker, which way would he go? Would he go the MPP way? Would he go the NDC way? And also, it also depends on the people Alan surrounds himself with. When I say the people, I'm not even talking about MPP people. All the other people he's talking about being part of that movement. Because remember, his is not a political party. His is a movement. So he'll be looking to bring others in. If it so happens that he now becomes king maker, which side does he sway to? Does he sway to <coughs> President Mahama? <coughs> does he sway to whoever becomes the flag bearer of the MPP? That's a million dollar question we would have to ask as we go forward with this particular election. Now, Mr. Pagwe Bachidankwa, if there are concerns that you would have in terms of the utterances that have been made either by us as media, from the opposition NDC, the other opposition past CPP in consideration because they've been the most vocal apart from the NDC, and then also civil society, etc., what would be some of those worrying some utterances that you think should be deflated? Well, Roland, you see, um, we are involved in politics. Tomorrow is a major day for the New Patriotic Party. And um, a day to the election is important that for those of us that are in government and also are in the political party have a sober reflection of what is going to happen tomorrow. Okay. Which explains my stance in how I'm delivering my conversation this morning. 
Um, I'll raise a few points. I mean, I, I think that um, I, I will not hold brief for anything that any of you have said or done um, civil society organizations. I would say that it makes the entire game beautiful. I mean, let's just, let's just go ahead with it. Um, but I'll raise a few things that um, re-emphasizes that al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia yeah, is not a system candidate as people have so purported it to be. Um, very, very clearly, tomorrow's election is a very keenly contested election. Keenly contested election. I think that with the exception of Adainimo, who um, has been a, a repeat from um, various successive elections in terms of um, primaries within the new patriotic party, all the other three are new entrants. Um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is a new entrant um, into the flag bearer shape. Um, Kennedy Japan is a new entrant into the flag bearer ship. Ifriya Koto as well <coughs> um, is a new entrant into the um, flag bearer ship. And I would want to state the significant contribution of Al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Bam. Yeah? I have stated to the MPP. Yes, to the New Patriotic Party. And I think that it's important that um, we just oppose the contest of the election we are going to have tomorrow within the New Patriotic Party. We are going to have a delegated election. What does it mean? It means that we're going to have an election that is going to be voted on by delegates of the new patriotic party. I mean, I hear um, um, lawyer Jantua speak about um, a debate within um, the four aspirants on a national platform. But I mean, on the national platform, you are aware that on a national platform is the entire Ghanaian people. And for us as a new patriotic party, we are aware as well that whoever we choose, we are not oblivion of that at all. We are aware that whoever we choose is going to represent the country. And should that person win, that will be the choice of the Ghanaian people. And um, the New Patriotic Party has a history of winning elections and winning successive elections. And so um, we don't want to um, focus on um, some grasshopper issues, um, um, on, on, on lights and uh, street lights and all of those. Grasshopper. There, there are, there are lion you call that issues. grasshopper. There are lion issues I've that allowed we have dealt with. There are successful, wow. there are successful issues that have, this has government, opened their flag. Yes, I mean, there are, there are successful At issues. Night, no there lights are, on the there road. Are successful People are issues. dying. There are successful wow. issues. When he was talking, I was not disrupting. Sorry. There are successful issues that this country and this government has dealt with. I think that if you want to champion the successes of President Anadu Danko Kufuado together with his number two, Al Haji okay. Dr. Mamou. I think it's important that you champion all of that. I mean, because right. the entire value chain of the country is not oblivion of some challenges that we face. But what I'll are just, the good signs? I'll just, I'll just go through it. I mean, you recall that in 2012, when we went to the Supreme Court and um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia stood before the judges, as a result of its input today, the entire country and the entire Electoral Commission has reforms because of a man who was, whose preoccupation was not a you, political you, he was career person. Oh, I beg your pardon? It was it's the, the outcome it's, it of... Is, it is his witnessing. It is, it is his it is witnessing the outcome process. No, it of is, the case. It is his the judgment. witnessing process. Yes. It is Based his, on the recommendation. It is his witnessing that led process. To... Of course. It is his witnessing process that has caused electoral reforms in the electoral commission was he the in only, this country. Was he the only witness? He was, he was the most prominent witness. From by your judgment. judgment. Well, from the... What from are the, some of the reforms? From the, from, oh, I can name them. I will, I will state them. Continuous voter registration exercise, establishment of the National Place. Coalition Continuous Center. Continuous voter registration exercise hasn't been done in 2021, 2022. The Inter-Party Addressy Committee, the use of biometric verification devices, um, um, serial numbering <laughs> of, of statement of poll and declaration of results, the administration of oath by issue officials and others. These reforms are there. And, uh, nobody can, <laughs> can, can, can make a... Um, um, a claim to that. Now, when we came into office, and al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the vice president to Nanado Danko Kufuado. President Nanado Danko Kufuado is not a weak politician. He's a very tough politician. He's not a sleeping president. He's a president that takes to the latter the very details that are needed. Now, when we came... It's there a was president no... who has taken us to the IMF. Well... Every and country. not only taking us to well, the IMF, well, well, to the point the that NDC we, John Drummond our, in Mahama also took us to the IMF. Yes, but our yes. debt has so become yes. so the value, is the, same. the value is never the same. <laughs> to the, the, to the point that we have to, we, we to, we have to restructure In the then debt. NDC government, there was no global pandemic called COVID-19. Yeah. Let's state Come it as on. it is. That let's Come state on. it as it is. In the then NDC government, there was not an invasion of Russia to Ukraine. I didn't think that this morning's conversation was going to be about it. Wow. But if that is where we are going to go, bring but it you, on. But you are raising it. Well, Nobody I'm has raised it for I, you. Let's, well, I'm, let's bring it on. Mm. 
When we came into office in 2016, in this country, there was not a unique identifiable number for every single citizen. You've traveled outside this country. You know the benefit of an ID card. People travel across the length and breadth of this country. People from Canada coming to Ghana with the Ghana that, card. You are aware of that. What's that for? What is the purpose of a Ghana card? No, what's, why are you raising the ID card issue? No, I'm telling you the successes that we have talked. No, but were you the ones I, who started I, 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 it? I, I, ID card had allow been... Me, were you the ones who started to, it? Allow me to build my point. I mean, this heckling of these were other you the ones people who started who it? the most, I'm not the too sure what it is. We're the grasshoppers. No, that's not what I said. Don't, that's don't, what you don't, said. Don't, that's, don't, that's, that's not what, what I said. said. I have, you see, you are taking that's me out of context, but I will not be distracted at all. issues. I will not be distracted at all. We're the grasshoppers. That's not what I said. Don't, don't... Grasshopper issues. Don't raise, don't, don't, don't do that. That's not what I've said. Put what I said in context. I said that the government has struck successes. You understand? In issues. every single country, the country all around the world, the country has had challenges. I mean, global, global countries have had challenges. The United States of America has had challenges. Um, UK has had challenges. At a time, we didn't even know who was the prime minister of the United Kingdom. So let's, let's put the issues in proper context and, 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 and deliver the points very well. When we came into this country, like I said, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, as a vice president, enabled the mobile money interoperability. Now, those days, you will look for a yellow umbrella, MTN, and go and send money. You look for a How red umbrella. How did he enable that? It was already a policy decision uh, at the Bank of Ghana. You, you have to speak to facts. I'm speaking to facts, of because course. Because it was already no, a policy. No, but I'm speaking to facts. A policy. It was implemented, it was okay. implemented by a government. You okay. can't take that away. So, so not, Roland, not started you, by Roland, the Kufa led government. You cannot take that no, away. Speak to the it facts. It was implemented, but I'm speaking to the facts. If you allow me, we'll have a good conversation. Don't heckle me whilst I'm delivering the point. I'm not today. heckling you yes, because you're, you're, not, you're not speaking I to the facts. I am speaking fact. to the facts. Mobile money interoperability was done when? The it policy, was implemented by the, the policy to President start an interoperability policy for all the telecom networks was not there started was, by the Kufado led government. Was, it's a very simple there, there was, fact that you there, have to state. There was a yellow umbrella you look for to go and send money. There was a red umbrella, Vodafone, you look for to go and send money. There was a green umbrella, Glow, you look for to go and send money. There was a blue umbrella, Tigo, you look for to go and send money. There was Zane, that you look for to go and send money. Today, that has become a thing of the past. Mm. The informal sector, today, when you pick your phone, star 170 hash, you can easily send money all across the length and breadth of this country. When we are talking about these issues, this, you, don't, you don't want us to talk. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has cleaned up the leakages of <laughs> revenue through the ECG by digitalizing it. We talk about these issues, you don't want us to talk about it. Roland, allow me to establish my point to the Ghanaian people, because that is critically important. The National Property Digital Address System. Today, you don't need a watch seller or a Lotto kiosk seller to tell you where Laboni Junction is or to tell you where Amasamai is. Just by the point of a Google GPS, you can easily locate yourself. When I was coming from my house, I put TV3. Not that I do not know TV3, but I want to be able to appreciate the traffic situation. It is important. There is paperless port. There is online passport application everywhere in this country. Today, you can apply for your passport, regardless of your boundary or jurisdiction. There is the Zongo Development Fund. There is the Sino Hydro Project. There is the Development Authorities. There is the One Village, One Dam. All of these are contributions, policy contributions of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. There is the Free SHS. In the first 100 days of President Nanao Dedanko Kufaro, this policy was implemented. So we talk about the successes of government. And you don't want to chalk the successes of government. But I don't expect um, Senior Jantua to chalk the successes of government. It's not a problem. But the government has done extremely well in the midst of these um, challenges. We have re we restored teacher training allowances. We restored nursing training allowances. These drones that are delivering medication all across the length and breadth of this country. Today, that has become a thing of the past. You have drones that are delivering medication to rural communities in this country, saving lives in this country. Delivery tracker. All of these, universal QR code, redenomination of the Ghana city, monetary policy, a lot of things that this government and the successes that this government has struck. There is no way we'll be blinded to it. We thought that we were going to have a conversation around um, the MPP primaries. But if this is what it is, we'll bring it on. Now, we have had a balanced leaders. The new patriotic party in this electioneering that we are going for has been a balanced leaders. Clearly, no candidate is favored. Everyone has worked their sort. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has traveled the length and breadth of this country. So has Kennedy in Japan. So has Dr. Free Yakuto. So has Adainimo. And every single person expects to win the general election, which is tomorrow. We are in no doubt in our mind that the delegates would make a good decision. 
on who this country deserves and needs party to election, lead. not general election. Well, it's a party it's general party election. election. It's a party general election. It can't it's a party general the election. The people are not part it's and parcel party. of it. It's a party general election. It's not a party general election. It's a party delegated general election. Part with and for me. party, yes. So bringing my submission to a close, clearly, you know, that the odds are against the NDC. They are very scared of who the MPP is going to elect as the flag bearer. They know that he is going to be a strong match for H.E. John Dramani Mahama, who the Ghanaian people have rejected overwhelmingly 2016, 2020. They said they didn't want him. The, the NDC did not listen to that advice. They brought him home again. We will defeat John Dramani Mahama on the 7th of December 2024. Mark my words. Use it for your headlines. On 2025, 7th of January, when the Chief Justice is swearing in the next president of the Republic of Ghana, that president would be from the new patriotic party. Now, you have heard. This wrap up for me. I'm wrapping up. You have heard that other persons were vice president and threatened to resign. It's on record. In fact, that the former vice president, Miss Arthur, on record, that the wife, that the husband wanted to resign. Even John Drummond in Miami himself wanted to resign. I mean, there are many people who have been vice presidents that have. wanted to. Nobody can take away that shine. The government of Nanado, where we have the vice president, who is a leading person in this election, as the head of government's economic management team, has not made life bearable for, for them and for the people. Those yeah. are key issues that, that voters, even in MPP, would, would, would look at before they even, they even cast their vote. Is that, not, is that another point? Of course, because if you even see the polls that have come out, yes. you would even see that within the NPP, there are some significant number of persons that believe that this government has failed. And there, there's no debate about this. The Ekufuadu Baumia government has failed. All the promises that they gave in the lead up to the 2016 and then in the lead up to the 2020 elections, they have failed, majority of them. And it's very clear, and the people know, the hardships in this country today. I'm very surprised that our friends you know, still have the, the courage to sit on national television and tell us that they are going to win the next election. I mean, who, who is going to sit down to witness another four years of NPP mismanagement and destruction of this country? For seven years. It's been a, about abuse of office, corruption, nepotism, destroying the foundations that governments before you have built, building independent institutions. Today, you have destroyed all independent institutions, all independent institutions. So? The Electoral Commission has no credibility as we speak today. There are people who are bastardizing the judiciary, even including former justices of the highest court of the land, talking about how you are destroying the judiciary as an institution. You've messed up the entire country, and you still think that you can win the next election. Who is going to sit down for that to happen? Let me tell you, the people of Ghana are well awake, and even people within your party. Alan Chen Martin, listening to him yesterday, mm -hmm. he's talking about how you have failed to even put very basic, fundamental economic policies in order to address the issues that we are facing today. The inflation rate that we have as of today is in excess of, of 40%. Uh, inflation rate is 38%. I mean, it, was, it, was it, 40 it, it went up to over 50%. 54, yes. Look at the interest rate. 
Look at the, the forex rate. Look at our debt. Today, people cannot assess monies that they have invested with the bank. Monies that people have invested, they have, they have lifetime savings. They cannot assess it. And you still think that you can hoodwink Ghanaians with some of these sloganeering. Dr. Baumia has you said you that. You call them sloganeering. One oh, yes. district, one factory. Oh, I mean, all factor. of these things, they, 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 they are no concrete, they are they are no concrete results. From all of these the things they have, they have spoken about. No, 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 no. Yesterday, I watched, I watched the, the national president of Nagrat talking about double track system and how it is destroying our education. You won't address these pertinent issues. Media General is doing well. If you go to uh, the, the hardest hit areas of the Akosombo Dam spillage, people are sleeping in classrooms and going to school under trees. The conditions that people are going through, that government is not even able to address these issues. Man-made disasters, disasters that did not come out of a natural course. You can't even manage some of these things. And you think that you can secure a third term for a Kufuado through Dr. Baumia. It will not happen. And nobody is going to sit down for that to happen. We know all the plans you have put in place. The only reason MPP can win the next election is to steal the elections. It's not and true. that will not happen. It is not true. And that will not it happen. Is not true. That is why the MPP you are the packing election? the Electoral Commission. The MPP still that election? is why you every are, you are packing has, the judiciary. That is why it you are destroying. Please, please true. allow me. Please allow no, me. But you can't sit on please MPP allow me. The please will, allow me. Will, will, will the election. only is way and the only reasonable conclusion that anybody can come to is what I am saying. That the only way the MPP can win the next election is to steal the elections. We will not How are you going election. to win the election we will win with a mess? Ghanaians, Ghanaians give governments the opportunity to continue governance based on their delivery, based on their record. What is the record? What is the record of Baumia? You are saying that Baumia helped for uh, reforms in the electoral Inter system. Electoral system. Let me deal with the electoral system first. We voted in 2012 with biometric verification devices, if you do not know. In 2012, the elections were conducted with biometric verification devices. And so it was not because of Baumia's ignorant uh, uh, display at the Supreme Court, where, as a witness, and you know, because I know that you are also uh, involved in, I mean, you are interested in, 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 the, in the law, that if you are a witness and you go to court and say that you were not there, on what, what is the, 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 the weight that we will put on, on, on such a witness? And so that ignorance that he displayed that did not produce anything for the people of Ghana. Interoperability was signed by the NDC, if you do not know. The, in, the contract for interoperability was signed by the NDC, before we left office, that policy was already in place at the Bank of Ghana. Look at how you have run down the Bank of Ghana. If the Bank of Ghana had a regulator, it would have been closed down by now. It's over 60 billion debts, a, a, a loss, a, the printing of monies without having anything to show for, flouting various rules and various laws in this country, you will not have a third term. Let me repeat this. A Kufuado will not have a third term through Dr. Baumia. We will not sit down and allow that to happen. The people of Ghana will rise, and it is going to be a clear victory for His Excellency uh, uh, John Mahama. That is what is going to happen in 2024. And so if you have any plans, if you are thinking that you have any crude means of winning the next elections, he said, he said the you will better be review your he said notes. The, he said the because that be... is not going to happen. Please wrap up. That is not going to happen. So, Roland... The record, as we know, of the NPP has been a failure. One district, one factory. He said he cites one where, village, where, one where, 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 where are the, they build it, they where build are it for 1.2 billion dollars. Where are the district factories? NDC build it for 1.2 billion dollars. Where are the dams? We did it for 5 million. Please, 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 please. You it's said NDC. you brought it. You are now Lute referring to who signed it. Please, please. Lute Lute I need to put it in context. The corruption that is going on in this country, it is because of the way we have structured our democratic system. It's because of the patience of Ghanaians, because of the lessons that the military has learned over the years, 
that we still have a democratic system running. Right. Because no country in Africa that a minister of state will have more than $10 million under her bed. And that democratic system will still be in place. It will not happen in any country. But because of the, the way we have structured our system, we believe that, I mean, we are left with one year for MPP to leave. So we don't need any disruption of the system that nope. we have. We want to vote so in 2024. Have to go Yes, we want to vote in 2024 and, and yeah. vote <laughs> against them and bring back okay. John Mahama to bring, bring back. to to take the country on the path of economic Mr. bring Mr. back. You, you, Nobody is going to bring John you, Mahama back. Back for Mr. what, Mr. Pargrave? I'm sorry. I, I, as you wrap up, Mr. Mr. Jantua, the, as you lit the candle, of course, uh, the description me is a grasshopper description so far. Um, at the end of the day. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is the lead in the poll, will have to be measured by what he said he would do when he was in opposition and what he has done as vice president. Is that not the case? I mean, that, that's the altruistic truth, right? Uh, Roland, I now understand why the MPP is talking the way they are talking. Because they feel they are leading the population of blind people. If streetlights is a grasshopper issue, because in darkness you can't see anything. So to them, Ghanaians are blind, and whatever we do, they would win the next election. Fine. Let me take one of the areas that Paul Grieve mentioned as their successes. One Dam, there are one, many ones. One, one district. Wait, wait, no, I'm taking only one. One village, one dam. One village, one dam. Where is that now? Did it succeed? Did we not spend taxpayers' money in that particular project? Did we not? We know the north is a breadbasket. They produce food. Water is key in the north. Has it happened? And let me ask the question, where are we today? And he didn't mention it in a list of things he said. Where, is, where are we with Galamse? Where are we with Galamse? If the president put his presidency on the line, it means the National Patriotic Party eh, have put their presidency on the line where Galamse is concerned. Have they been able to do anything about it? So, Dr. Baumia came and said so many flowery things. He actually, eh? and then he reneged from it. The um, uh, thing that they wanted to charge us. On the e levy. E levy. Did he not say, eh, when he was in opposition, that... It wasn't something that we should do. Because it's poor Ghanaians who use poor, it. Exactly. What happened? It's even been extended to other electronic transactions. I said, transactions. what happened? What happened? Can Paul Grave really tell us that all the things they said in opposition and when they came into power, all the things they said they've done, some of the projects that they said were done, they were, they were going to do, were fantastic projects. Can he tell us that they succeeded in it? What has been the end point of one district, one factory today? They should tell us. One, 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 one hospitals. What has been the success of it? And uh, 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 Roland, it's not a question of putting 111 hospitals in. It's a question of the content of the hospitals. If the hospital is a shell and doesn't have what we need to get in there to heal people, Will, will, will the hospitals be profitable to Ghanaians? Simple thing. Simple thing. Dialysis. Dialysis. The cheapest dialysis uh, uh, center is Kolebu. That's the cheapest. They owe $4 million, a debt of $4 million. Have they, as government, been able to do anything about it? Especially Ghanaians who are suffering dialysis go there and they're beginning to die one by one and Paul Grave tells me that 
street lights is not a problem. It's grasshopper. Yes, it is. When people die at night with the kind of roads that we have, people die and it's grasshopper issue. Neil Ante Van der Poy, the Mayor of Parliament, says, what, what is Palgrave talking about? Uh, Jantua, uh, well, um, Comrade Jantua, uh, Comrade, CPP, yeah. Yes. Comrade. Comrade Jantua made a good point. In the U.S., there is an ongoing debate for presidential candidates of the Republican Party, internal party debates, and rich out Democrats. Secondly, the property addressing system and all these digital initiatives were started under John Mahama, and Minister Omane Buama, Neil Ante Van der Poy. Now, okay, okay. So I have this one from Kofisika. President Anado was defeated in 2008 and 2012. On both occasions, he was partnered by Dr. Ma Ma Baumia. Yet, that did not prevent the MPP from bringing the same serial losers again in 2016. So obviously, it cannot be true that if you lose elections even twice, you can still come and contest and win. The data doesn't support it. Prince Henry says, The showdown is coming tomorrow. After the showdown, we will see who is the beneficiary. Kizito from Tema says, It's very laughable when I hear Mr. Palgrave speak this way. Was he rhyming or singing and just chanting the policy slogans, or he was telling us that they have been an achievement in any way?